The racist history behind facial recognition. Uber sued over racist facial recognition software known as techno racism. Men's lips mistaken for open mouth by racist online passport checker. Racial bias in facial recognition technology. Is facial recognition racist? One, two, three. Facial recognition software has become increasingly popular in the past several years. It is used everywhere. Airports, venues, shopping centers, and even by law enforcement. There are a few potential benefits to using the technology, to prevent and solve crimes, for example. But there are also many concerns about privacy and safety. And another issue connected to facial recognition has caught worldwide attention, racism. So, what's wrong with facial recognition? Why is this so serious? And is facial recognition really racist? Let's have a look. A facial recognition system is a technology that can identify or verify a person from a digital image or a video frame from a video source. A while ago, we talked about Amazon's facial recognition software, Recognition. You can check that out right here to get more info on the technical side. This time, we'll talk about one of the major concerns with the AI technology, race and gender bias. In September 2019, the photograph of Joshua Bader from England was rejected when he applied for a new passport. The reason? The system mistook his lips for an open mouth. As a result, the man was told his application had not been accepted because he needed to provide a neutral expression and a closed mouth, something he had in fact done. But the algorithms couldn't interpret his lips correctly because they were obviously not trained with a sufficient amount of images of black people. This is not the first time that the use of face recognition has been problematic. Here's Lorena Jaume Palasi from the Ethical Tax Society. She told us why Apple had to change their popular infrared face ID more than once in the past two years. Und zwar, weil äh, durch äh, dieses äh, Infrarotsystem man bis dato nur ähm, Bilder von Menschen mit relativ weißer Haut äh, gut abgebildet hat, aber Menschen mit einem anderen, ähm, mit einer anderen Pigmentierung äh, hatten tatsächlich Probleme von der Kamera erkannt zu werden. The market for the technology is growing exponentially. According to a recent report, the facial recognition industry is expected to grow to 2.9 billion euros in 2019 and to 6.3 billion by 2024. And that's only in the US. But the systems seem to be far from perfect. For Joshua over here, the flaw in technology may have meant a few hours extra at the passport office. Doesn't sound too dramatic. The problem? This case isn't really an exception. Just imagine the possible consequences if the flaws aren't fixed. Popular apps using face recognition could exclude certain ethnic groups because they don't work on them. Flawed recognition technology could lead to serious misjudgments by the police when it comes to identifying suspects or criminals. And conversely, ethnic facial features could intentionally be used to identify certain groups of people because they are suspected to be more prone to violence and crime, for example. So, face recognition systems carry the danger of misidentifying someone and leading to wrongful convictions. But they could also be very damaging to societies by being abused by law enforcement or other organizations for things like constant surveillance of the public. The Chinese government, for example, is already using facial recognition to arrest jaywalkers and other petty criminals. This has sparked debate. Where is the line between protecting the public and encroaching on basic civil rights and privacy. Okay, okay, facial recognition is a technology and therefore, of course, not racist. But what about the people behind it, the programmers or technicians? Recent studies suggest that several facial recognition algorithms suffer great gender and racial biases, including one used by tech giant Amazon for its publicly available recognition software. The study said that while recognition had a 0% rate at classifying lighter-skinned males, it had a 31.4 error rate at categorizing darker-skinned females. Amazon has disputed the findings, saying that the researchers had used an outdated version of its tool and that its own checks had found no difference in gender classification across ethnicities. One major problem, 
Amazon simply didn't test their algorithms sufficiently enough. They didn't feed the system enough images of ethnic minorities while developing it. You might think, Apple and Amazon have the money to fix this, so we'll be fine. And it seems that some tech firms have noticed that they need to improve. But shouldn't a company think of possible social impacts of its new technologies before publishing and monetizing them? What do you think? Let us know in the comments. And if you've got a digital topic that you'd like us to cover, let us know as well. Hope you enjoyed this video. Bye.